So morning uh, everyone, welcome back. So it's another data analysis video. Um, this is the third uh, and last video I'm going to do for now about uh, normalization and standardization of data. Uh, so two videos ago I recorded um, a video about uh, data normalization uh, and this is it's a form of feature scaling. It's where we take a variable, take a feature uh, and we we scale it so it, it is on a scale from in most cases between zero and one. It's usually going to be between zero and one because of the formulas we, we would use, such as square when we square values, when we take absolute values, it's going to it's going to produce a scale that's between zero and one. Uh, and recall that um, uh, one thing I mentioned was when we um, when we do normalization in that way, if your data is not normally distributed, um, it will not make it normally distributed. That's a different type of transformation, uh, which I'll cover in a different video. Um, so it, all it does is change the scale essentially. And there are often, there are often quite good reasons for changing the scale for a vari that a variable is measured on. If we have a number of different variables, different features in a model, and they're measured on vastly different scales, it can become difficult to compare their relative contributions to the model. Also, if we're running, if we've got a really large data set with lots of variables involved, and we're running some sort of machine learning algorithm, it can, if they're if they're measured on the same scales, it can make the algorithm much more efficient. Okay, so that's normalization, and then in the last video. I covered standardization of data and this is kind of a scaling technique as well where um, we we transform the data so the variable has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one uh, and that type of standardization is most useful um, so it creates a get z score essentially um, or it puts it on a z score scale that has the has the parameter properties of a standard normal distribution. So standardization is, as I said previously, most useful if our data uh, meets the assumptions uh, or it closely approximates a normal distribution, a Gaussian distribution. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in this video is kind of just demonstrate um, both normalization and standardization again. And I'm going to use the scikit-learn software library. So this is a machine learning library that's um, that's used in Python. has a lot of functionality. It's really good. Um, and I, I will just I'll demonstrate um, how to normalize data. Uh, I think I'll do. I think what I'll use is the min-max scalar to to do that for in um, scikit-learn. And then I'll de demonstrate uh, data standardization using the standard scalar method. I think I demonstrated uh, using standard scalar to standardize data in the previous video, but I'll do it again here and kind of highlight how that works, essentially. Um, I, I think I mentioned in a previous video as well that when you use scikit-learn for, um, for machine learning, data analysis, whatever you're using it for, um, the kind of the four sort of key steps um, are you kind of import scikit-learn or the the modules, the uh, methods that you want to use. You import them, you instantiate them as some sort of object. You then fit your data, uh, use that object to fit your data to it, uh, and then conduct any transformations you might need to conduct on the data, and then. You can then, yeah, once it's fitted um, to your model, you can then use it to predict, make predictions about um, scores that don't appear in the data set. So in, in this case, we're not going to be looking at prediction because we're not fitting, we're not going on and fitting a linear regression model or anything like that. I'm just demonstrating how you can standardize and normalize data. So the first few of those steps are relevant here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is import a couple of video, um, a couple of uh, software libraries. Uh, to start with in this first cell, I'm going to import pandas as PD, matplotlib, pyplot as PLT, seaborn as SNS, so the usual nicknames for these software libraries. We're going to, I'm going to create some plots so we can visualize and look at how the scales change on our variables. And I'm going to also import some uh, data. So the data I'm going to use uh, is 
It's data that I've collected in research uh, and it was collected online by getting participants to play a public goods game. Um, so there's quite a few, there's a few data points in this. And um, it was collected over three years. Um, don't need to say too much about this data set. I use it as an example in other analysis videos, but um, it, it's kind of quite a useful one to demonstrate what we what we're interested here because some of the variables are measured on vastly different scales. So I'm going to import it and save it as a, a data frame object called pgg underscore df, so public goods game data frame. And I'm going to use uh, the pd dot <coughs> read, excuse me, read underscore csv method. And they've got, I've got it saved as a CSV file on my laptop. So I'm just going to pass that as a string. See, it's, I'm pointing at the relevant folder so it's, it finds it. And if we import that and call the head then to display the first five lines of the data, you can see there's a number of different uh, variables here that have been recorded. There's a sex of the participant, um, the age, uh, postcode, IMD score, the crime rank for the neighborhood they live in. The IMD score is like a deprivation index as well. Various other things as well. Mean contribution they've made in the public goods game. Mean score on the CFC scale, which is the consideration of future consequences, sort of assesses how much they consideration they give to the future consequences of their actions. So we're only going to look at a few variables here. Uh, and uh, those are age, IMD score, their CFC mean score and their mean contribution in the public goods game. So I'm going to I'm going to use Seaborn to create a pair plot of these four variables um, just to kind of illustrate uh, so we can see what the scales are that they're measured on. Uh, and notice that what, what I'm doing is I'm using sns.pairplot and in parentheses I'm passing the data frame object and then a list of the four variables I'm interested in. And notice that I'm using double brackets here. So I'm, but I'm passing a list inside uh, double brackets. So if I run that, we're going to get this pair grid from Seaborn. And you can see what it does, it creates histograms for each individual variable uh, on the diagonals. The off diagonals are the um, show kind of the relationship plots between uh, the two variables. But what I'm most interested in here is if we look at the x-axis values at the bottom, you can see that age is measured on a scale from like 18 to about 60. IMD score is measured on a scale from 0 to um, about 32, 33,000. CFC mean is measured on a scale from 0 to 5. Public goods uh, game mean contribution is measured on a scale from 0 to 10. So hugely different scales that these things are measured on. Um, which could be an issue if we put them into some sort of uh, uh, model to uh, uh, such as as a such as a linear regression model or something like that. Um, and uh, if I, what I'm going to do is uh, just to sort of show that I'm going to get descriptive. So I've asked for basically I've passed those the same. I've passed the data frame object with those four variables. I've used the dot describe method and I've. Kind of asked it to round the values to two decimal places just so it's neater to read and what we can see here is what i'm what i'm interested in showing is we've got like these kind of descriptive statistics summary uh your five number summary some measures spread and center and our four variables in each column you can see so the minimum age minimum value is 18 maximum is 57 IMD score, minimum value is 6, maximum is 32,540, so a very big scale indeed. Um, minimum CFC mean score 1.75, maximum 4.75, so that was kind of measured I think on a scale from 0 to 5. And likewise our mean public goods game contribution measured on a scale from 0 to 10, and those are the minimum maximum values that actually appear. So what I'm going to do is, with this data set, uh, we'll start, first of all, we'll normalize it and we'll use scikit-learn to do min-max scaling. Um, okay, so what I'll do is I'll make a copy of this, I'll make a copy of the data frame, save it as a separate object, 
um, and then I can use the original again to demonstrate standardization afterwards. So I'm going to basically all I'm doing here is I'm getting, creating a new object, public goods game data frame two, and that's just a copy of the original data frame we've imported. Okay, so let me do that, and then I'm going to import um, the min max scalar method um, or function from scikit-learn, uh, and I'm going to fit it to the variables. So. So I'm importing it here. So from sklearn.preprocessing, I'm going to import minmax scalar, and then I'm saving it. So I'm instantiating it. I've imported it there, and I'm instantiating it here as a particular object. I'm going to set. I'm going to basically give it the name scalar. So scalar equals minmax scalar. Okay, and then I'm taking the data frame object, and I'm using scalar.fit underscore transform so in the previous video when i demonstrated how to how how to do uh standardization using scikit learn what i did i did that in two steps i i first uh used dot fit and then i did dot transform so uh, more coding but here we've got we've got a method that is going to perform both steps for us at the same time um so what i've done there is i've don't fit on the score transform and I've just passed our list our data frame and our list of variables that we're interested in so if I run that um, so what the above what's happened here where I've done that is the above rescaling has converted the data frame to a numpy array and we need to essentially convert it back to a pandas data frame object so those nice kind of html data frame objects that you often see uh, when i run these things using pandas so all i'm to do that all i'm going to do is i'm going to pass um uh, where i'm going to select only the columns the variables we're interested in but i'm going to i'm going to basically take the public goods game df2 object use pd.data frame so the data frame method, and I'm passing our uh, this this object here, our data frame two object, and just specifying those columns. So all I'm doing here is, is convert. All I've done in that step is basically um, take this scale fit transformed object and convert it back to a pandas data frame. Uh, and if we if we run the pair plot again on this new data frame two. What we should see, if this has worked, is that all our variables should now be on a scale from zero to one. Okay, so let's have a look at that. And there you can see that at the bottom. So age has been converted and it's now on a scale from zero to one. Uh, likewise, IMD score zero to one, CFC mean zero to one, and public goods gain mean contributions now converted on a scale of zero to one. So remember with min max scalar, what it, what it does is it, um, it, it's the most common type of um, normalization uh, technique used in machine learning. And it, it, it basically maps the data points on a scale from zero to one where the smallest data point that's been recorded in the data set, it gets mapped to zero and the largest gets mapped to one. Uh, uh, so, it kind of it adjusts the scale it, it's really it changes the scale that the the variables measured on but it also if you you know if you had an original scale from zero to 100 but you only had data points recorded from 20 to 80 or something like that uh, and no no existing data points between 0 and 20 20 and uh, 80 and 100 it would map the lowest value um, of data you had recorded so 20 to zero and 80 to, to one, so to speak. All right, so let's confirm this as well. If we look, I'll, I'll bring up the descriptive stats again for this uh, data frame. And what we can see is now age has a minimum of zero and a maximum of one. IMD, minimum zero, maximum of one. Mean CFC score, minimum zero, maximum one and public goods game mean contribution minimum zero maximum one so they've all been normalized onto um this uh, they're all now measured on the same scale between zero and one okay so that's normalization let's do some standardization similar sort of thing essentially um 
but this time we're going to we're going to use a different uh, scikit-learn method. We're going to pre-processing method. We're going to use stand the standard scalar method. Uh, so basically, standard scalar will convert uh, the variables to z scores. So it'll give them a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. So I'm going to create a, another copy of the original data. I'm going to call it public goods game df3 data frame three uh, to work with. So we're we're back to uh, currently we're back to this original kind of uh, ver this original data frame where the variables are on these massively different scales. And to do this, I'm gonna I'm gonna import standard scalar from Scikit-Learn in a similar way to what I just described with min-max scalar. Uh, I'm gonna import it first. So from sklearn preprocess import standard scalar. I'm gonna instantiate as a data frame object called as a as an object called SC um, and then I'm going to again rather than doing them as separate steps I'm going to use the dot fit transform method so I'm going to take PGG data frame 3 and I'm going to use SC standard scalar dot fit transform and I'm going to pass our data frame object and the four variables we're interested in okay so let's convert that back to a data frame object with just those four variables in it using the pd.dataframe method. I'm specifying only the columns that I wanted to use. So if I do that, um, same as what same as the steps that I performed before when doing normalization. Um, but what we should need to see now is if I create the pair plot, we should what we should see is we have means of zero and standard deviations of one. So if we look now, the scales are different. And we've got a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, mean zero, mean zero. This is obviously quite a skewed variable here. There's lots of, uh, appears to be lots of data points at this end of the scale. Uh, but we can confirm this with, if I run the, if I obtain some descriptive statistics, what we're interested in, in this case is the mean and standard deviation. Okay, so what we've now got is for all the variables, age, IMD, uh, CFC, PGG mean, they've all got a mean of zero and they've all got a standard deviation of one. So that has worked. See, it looks here like it's got like negative zero in front of these. And that's because um, it's going it's, it's gonna to have converted them, um, but there is some randomness involved in the process. So it's not going to be, it's going to be very, very close to zero. It's going to be quite precise, but it's not going to be exactly zero. Um, but that's what we're seeing here. So it has worked. Um, so we've standardized this variable. And looking at these, if we just sort of look at um, the kind of histogram switch variable. So in terms of standardization, and I think I said before, you, you kind of, it works best and you really want to use it with Gaussian distributed, normally distributed data. This variable age is clearly um, not normally distributed. So it probably wouldn't be the best thing to do here. Uh, but IMD score and CFC, uh, we could probably, you know, got a little bit of a tail, a little bit, bit weird. This one seems to be negatively uh, skewed, but um, we we could probably get away with um, st standardization on the other variables. Okay, so that is hopefully that is useful. Just a quick recap: a normalized data set will usually range from zero to one. I've said always here, but um, there might be occasions, depending on the type of normalization technique you use, where it's it's on a scale from negative one to plus one or something like that. Um, most of the formulas though seem to, um, you know, if it involves square and I'll take an absolute value, it's going to only produce positive values. Um, a standardized data set will have a mean of zero, standard deviation of one, but can have any upper or lower values. Uh, normalization is preferred in cases uh, where we don't assume any particular data distribution. Uh, and standardization is preferred when data follows a Gaussian distribution. And maybe we've got a lot of outliers or something like that. Okay, so hopefully that is useful. I think in the next few videos, I'm going to carry on talking about um, uh, kind of manipulating data. Although I've already done a lot of videos on data wrangling, I think in the next few, I'm going to carry on talking about uh, 
maybe how to deal with outliers and also how to transform data. And then we'll get into doing some uh, analysis like ANOVA and things like that. Okay, hopefully that was useful. Thank you.